Hey, hey, everyone. We are back with James Lewis's Express Slang NFL Power Rankings. This, oh, this might be one of the hardest weeks I know I said last week, but this might be even harder. With so many teams that are near the bottom, like, no, 7 through 10, losing. But like, yeah, this team won, but are they really good enough to move into the top 10? Ah, uh, just... Well, it's my job to pick. So, here we go. Number one, we'll go with the Saints. Barely beat the Panthers. That team that lost to the Browns. And they lost to the Cowboys after scoring barely any points. How did this offensive juggernaut get so tame? They went from, and he breaks another record, and another record, and another record to... Yay, he completed a pass. It's only the third quarter. Terrible. Thankfully for them, though, everyone else lost, so they stay at number one. Speaking of everyone losing, Chiefs and the Rams lose, so we go with that number two, Chargers. Yes, they'll lose once they get to the playoffs, like they always do. They have like four wins in the postseason with Phillip Rivers. Just saying. And I, I don't say they've been in the playoffs four times. I mean, they have four wins. So it's not like they made it the wild card, won division, and then lost in the championship game the that two years. No. They've been there four years, and they've lost every single freaking time. They've been more than four years. But you, you know what I mean. They have four wins in the postseason with Phillip Rivers, a guy who's had Hall of Fame running backs behind him. Still can't win. But for now, with the win of the Chiefs, Gotta put them here. Just saying. Now, at number three, do you pick the team that lost by eight points to the Chargers? Or the team that lost by seven against the fledgling Eagles? Of course, Nick Foles is back, which gives the Eagles a boost. Carson Wentz is a bit like Derrick Rose from the NBA. Great when he's on the field, but he can't finish a year, ever. Ah, tough choice, but the Chargers are number two for a reason, so the Chiefs go to three. Oh, bunch of them. Six players got picked to the Pro Bowl. But if they somehow make it to the Super Bowl, none of them go. Stupid to have the Pro Bowl before the Super Bowl. I'm just saying, it's stupid. And back when they had it in Hawaii, it's like, all right, it's in Hawaii. I'm going to go. And I was like, yay, it's in my home stadium in Florida. If you're Miami Dolphins, I was like, I got picked to drive 20 minutes to the stadium. I play in eight games a year. Wow, what an honor. Anyways, number four. Mm, the Bears beat the Packers finally since 2015. So it's been three years. But Rams have the better record. But the Bears' better defense will help them more than the Rams' offense. We already saw them play, and defense beat them. And if they face off again in the playoffs, I'm going to say the Bears slipped their way in here. They had the 49ers next week, which should be a win unless they really fuck up. But then they had the final showdown of Week 17 with the Vikings. The Bears at this point may have their seed clinched and be playing for nothing. So it could be a case of, do we risk our starters getting hurt and fucking us over in the playoffs? Or do we bench them? Or we're playing for one or two drives and then we're going to bench them. While the Vikings could obviously be fighting for the 6th seed or maybe even the 5th seed, depending what happens with the Seahawks. But, of course, the seasons may not be settled yet. With the way the season's going, this team wins, that team loses. They could be fighting between second seed and fourth seed. So, the Bears could be out there at full force. We'll have to wait and see. Now, finally, the Rams at five. What the beep happened? Like the Saints, uh, like the Saints they went from, Oh boy, it's halftime. We only have six touchdowns. We better step up the pressure next half to, It's two minutes to go. Maybe we should go for a first score of the game. Just saying. It's not that bad yet, but they're a, they're a team that scored 54 points. And then they just can't do anything this week. Like, what? Now's not time to be dropping off. Now's the time to be picking up steam. Now's the time to be picking up momentum for the playoffs. Speaking of playoffs, playoffs. That's right, playoffs. Number six, the Texans. They have nabbed the second seed and a first round bye. They still have two teams to go. But as long as they don't drop it, 
But then again, they are a team that could drop it, so only six in this ranking. If I was more confident that they were going to blow out the next two opponents, they'd probably be fifth right now, but they're going to be sixth for now because even as much as Deshaun Watson has improved over the year, there's just sometimes they just can't do anything, unfortunately. Number seven, wow, the Patriots. This is the first time they will not be the first or second seed since 2009. Unless the Texans drive the ball and the Patriots went out, obviously. But they will be playing a wild card game for the first time since 2009. Some teams say the Texans or the Vikings are excited just to be in the playoffs. For the Patriots, this this is not a good year for them. Like, can you imagine? Yeah, we're going to be the fifth seed. That's a terrible year for you guys. Or no, fifth, fourth seed. Not fifth seed. They'd be playing the fifth seed, which would probably be the Chargers. Anyways, number eight. Like I said at the beginning, so many teams lost. Cowboys, Seahawks, Broncos. Like These are all teams that are moving up and pushing their way forward and cruising to the postseason, and then the Broncos are eliminated. The Broncos have been eliminated because they lost to the Browns. Hell, the Browns can win out have the Colts and Titans both lose Week 16 and then tie each other in Week 17 and be in the playoffs. We're living in a world where the Browns have a chance to be in the playoffs. What the hell happened? Anyways, we gotta choose though. Who falls in at number 8? We'll go with the team that actually beat the Cowboys, the Colts. A few bad plays here and there earlier in the year has them currently on the outside looking in. But two weeks ago, they went out. So when like the Ravens stumble or the Steelers stumble, so the Ravens leapfrog them to win the North. Colts would still be in it. I thought, man, that'd be. Could you imagine finishing ten and six and be on the outside going, "Wow, look at that nine six and one Steelers ahead of us." Screw you guys. <laughs> or obviously number nine. The Ravens. I actually know it. Mm. Because it is so close to the AFC North. We're going to have the Ravens and Steelers at number 9. Both teams are fighting for the North. But the Ravens have the Chargers and Browns. Chargers are just phenomenal during the regular season. And the Browns are actually a team this year to fear. While the Steelers have the Saints. A team that normally you'd be like, oh yeah, that's they're going to crush them. To, well, they scored 12 points against a team that lost to the Browns. Right. They could actually lose this game pretty well. And then the Steelers finish it off with the Bungles. Both teams could win or lose both of those games. So there's some great football coming up and see just this is coming down to the wire. Last year they actually canceled the Sunday night game because every single game that they had going on had playoff implications. And let's say this team's playing the Sunday night game. It's like, oh well, because this team won and that team lost. The one team in this game has nothing to play for, so they're going to bench all their starters. It's going to hurt ratings, so they just canceled the game and moved it to an afternoon game or something like that. We could be having another scenario like that of, we can't have a single late game. All these games have meaning. Oh, man, I love football. All right, now we are here we are at 10. So many can go here, but... Just like with the ninth seed, we're going to go with two teams. Cowboys and the Seahawks. Are their days done and over with? Is this a trend of, oh shit, they can't actually play very well? Or is this just a blip and they're going to come back and win out the rest of the year? Two weeks, we got to wait to see. I'm surprised the Redskins won. They're on Josh Johnson. This is Josh Johnson's first win as a starter. This is He's been in the league since, like, what, 2014 or something? And this is the first win of his career as a starter. God damn, like, technically, like, the Redskins are still in it. The Eagles are obviously still in it, especially with the win over the Rams. The AFC East looked like it was going to be the Redskins. And then Alex Smith got hurt. So it looked like it was going to be the Cowboys. And then they lost 23 to nothing to the Colts. That's like... No one wants to win the East. 
It could be another year of 9-17 or 8-18 eight eight winning the East at this point. So we'll have to wait and see from that standpoint on the Cowboys and from the Seahawks. They were cruising with the fifth seed. They beat their main competition for the fifth seed, the Vikings, and then they lose. So the Vikings are right back into the hunt for the fifth seed as long as they went out and the Seahawks stumble again. Just saying. Now, ooh, bonus, number 11, which is actually like 15th because I've had a couple doubles here, but the Titans. If they win the next two weeks, they can still miss the playoffs. Some teams like the Vikings control their destiny. They win, they're in. They lose, they gotta hope everyone else loses as well. The Titans do not. They could be 10-6 and six and yet be eliminated while a 9-7 team gets a home game. God, how annoying would that be? Anyways, not as bad as, say, being 10-6 and six in the 7-9 Seahawks hosting a playoff game, but still gotta be frustrating. Now, for the teams that are bouncing back or still can, obviously, there's no time left. Either you're the team you're going to be, or you're not. So, time for the RIP section. Broncos and the Packers playoff hopes. Sorry, guys. And I love that the $135 million man has a worse record than the Browns and the rookie quarterback. Ha. Suck it. The Broncos waste their amazing defense, Von Miller breaking the Broncos' sack record for another year. Is it Case Keenan's fault entirely? Not really. You had a new quarterback, new system, new offensive coordinator, new chemistry with the team. That can take some time to build up. So next year, will he be better if they stick with him? Hopefully they do. We'll just have to wait and see. And then also, rip the Raiders stadium. There will be no more Raiders playing that stadium. Yes, it was a shithole. Literally at times. If they played when it rained, the plumbing would overflow into the sidelines. Not a joke. That actually happened several times. So I get why they're leaving. Because Oakland said, we're not going to build another stadium. It's like, well, we're tired of stepping off to the sideline. Oh, look at that. I'm, step I'm literally stepping in raw sewage. I can, so I can understand why they're leaving, but... Las Vegas? The state of Nevada has a papal Wow, really? A population of just under 3 million, like 2.998 million. Alameda County, where the Oakland Raiders play, has a population of 1.6 million. A county has over half what the state does. Also, I've never heard of anyone going, I'm going to go to Vegas to pay a ton of money to see a football game. It doesn't happen. How a lot of the like concerts and shows that they have there, people don't pay for those tickets. They go to the casino that's hosting that concert or event, gamble a ton of money away, more than what the tickets cost, and like, eh, hey, you just lost your kid's college fund. Here's two free tickets to the concert we're hosting. But the NFL doesn't want themselves associated with gambling, so I don't see them going, oh yeah, this casino can totally hand out tickets to the football game when it's 97 degrees and we have an open stadium. In the desert. Now how the hell are they going to handle the water issues? Las Vegas already has like, alright guys, no water used for the next three weeks. No showers, no boiling water. Nope, you can't use any water for the next three weeks because we have none. What if they're going through that and the NFL happens? Like, sorry, we, we, we can't use any water. How are we supposed to flush? Uh, scoop it up with your hands and throw it in a trash can? Might be a bigger shithole than the stadium they just left. I just... I don't see a team moving to Las Vegas going well, especially for the whole, we do not support gambling. We are against gambling. Oh yeah, we're in the gambling capital of the world. But, who knows? Maybe it'll work out for them. Time will tell. And as always, what do you guys think? Some of these teams will be dropped, some of these teams move higher... Again, like some of these things, like, is it just a fluke, just a bad week, or is this a trend? Are they being exposed? Like, now that they have more film on their quarterback or more film on their offensive line going, no, when the offensive line does this, they're going to go with that play. Now that we know that, we can tell the defense, like, hey, when you see the offensive line like that, they're going for this play. Stuff it. Which is why you get a lot of these rookie or maybe not a rookie, just like, 
They sat on the bench for two years. The guy ahead of him got hurt. They go out there. They do phenomenal work because there's no film on them. So they call out Blue 42. It's like, well, are they doing Blue 42 that the last quarterback did? Or are they doing their own Blue 42? Oh, they're doing their own Blue 42 that we don't know about. We have no film on. Then the next year, oh, they tried that and it doesn't work because now we have film. We know when he calls Blue 42, this is what he's going to do. So at the end of the year, where, oh, that quarterback, you know, six games ago calls that play, it works because the defense doesn't know. But now they have tape, they have film, the defense knows. God, I love football, and it's almost over again. <laughs> but that means I'm going to go back to playing Madden. I do not play Madden during football season. There's no point. I only play Madden during the off season because there's no football to watch. <laughs> Anyways, again, guys, as always, like, subscribe, comment down below, and have a wonderful day.